there are a few things we can all agree on these days, but there is one conclusion that everyone seems to reach. Modern women's pockets are irritatingly, impractically small. If they exist at all. This was not always the case, as we can see from surviving extants from the 18th century, which were not sewn into garments at all, but rather tied at the waist either underneath the skirt for extra security or on top of the outer garments for super easy access, like if you were a merchant doing daily business. Last year I made an 18th century petticoat to wear as a lightweight summer skirt, and while I do love it, I do kind of want some place to put things, and so I thought it was time to make an 18th century style pocket to match. Depending on your social status, these pockets could be elaborately embroidered or made from whatever small scraps of fabric you had lying around. Some people even made patchwork pockets with little bitty scraps sewn together, and when I saw those examples online, I knew that was the design I wanted to go for. I started by going through my cabbage stash and picking out pieces of similar sizes and trimming them down to a roughly uniform shape. I wanted this pocket to be a mashup and collage of as many past projects as possible, so I picked a wide variety of different fabric textures. How many past video projects can you spot? I will confess this is my first attempt at making a patchwork hmm, anything, so whether this is the proper way to do it, I have no idea, but it worked for me. I picked fabrics that were as close in size as possible and began pinning pairs together. I wanted to use some of my Kaylee overlay, and it is a very lightweight material, so any pieces I used, I backed with other fabric to stabilize it. Then I sewed the pairs together. I decided to use my modern machine for this, since I wanted my first attempt to go as smoothly as possible. I backstitched at the start and end of each pair, but to save time, I didn't actually cut the threads in between pairs. Once all the pairs were stitched together, I had a bunting style string of fabric. Then I snipped apart the pairs. I pressed all the pairs open and flat, taking care to press all the seams to one side. Then I began matching up the pairs by size and by complementary fabric to start making rows. I took a break from sewing to sketch out my pocket pattern. These don't have to be super precise, just a general elongated oval shape that's flat on the top. I probably overthought my process, but I wanted it to be as even as possible. I took my newly sewn together sets of four and worked out the next stage of design. This was very much a wing it all the way along project. I knew kind of what I wanted the end product to look like, but I trusted the process and kept myself flexible the whole way along. I did come to realize that not all of the rows had to be the same width, so I ended up with a few extra pieces that didn't make it into the final pocket. Once I was happy with the layout of the patchwork, I pinned and stitched the last rows together. I marked the center of my patchwork and then added the final piece to the top. Then I cut out my pocket. It was a little sad to see the extra pieces go, but there's always a next time. I also made a small mistake at this point. Did you catch it? That's right, my pattern piece did not have seam allowances built in, and I committed the total rookie mistake of not marking the pattern and cutting out a seam allowance. This meant that the pocket ended up slightly smaller than I originally meant it to be. And yes, I am completely aware of the irony of complaining that this pocket is a little bit small when it can hold more stuff than any of my other pockets. But still, lesson learned, and the next pocket will be larger and more glorious, for there will be a next one. Okay, complaining over, back to the sewing. 
Because I was keeping the seam allowances of the patchwork fairly small, and some of the fabrics I included are prone to fraying, I decided to cut out a backing for the inside of the pocket so that whatever I put inside wouldn't rub on the raw seams and wear the pocket down faster. For the back of the pocket, I used some of my favourite TARDIS fabric. There will come a day when I finally use up the last of this fantastic fabric, but it is not this day. This is a sturdy quilting cotton, which means it's great for the back of the pocket. I sewed the backing to the patchwork with a narrow seam allowance, and then I marked down 5 inches from the top for the opening. To make sure neither the patchwork or backing fabric shifted before I could bind it, I sewed down each side of the opening slit, taking care to go as close as possible to the line without crossing over. Once it was securely stitched down, I cut it open. Why I used my rotary wheel instead of my fabric shears, I have no idea, but it did work. And it looked just a little bit like the Millennium Falcon. I attached the backing wrong sides together, right side facing out. Normally seams get sewn right sides together, but since I'm going to be binding the edges, it just made sense to sew it this way. Then I stitched all the way around, using the previous seam line as my guide. All that was left to do was bind the edges and add the waistband. Easy peasy. I took more scrap fabric for the binding, measuring all the way around, and then trimming my fabric down to an inch wide. At this point the pocket was mostly done, which is when it promptly went into the I'll finish it later pile for a couple of weeks. I pinned on the binding all the way around, including both edges of the opening. Then I backstitched all the way around, working from the back, so I can make sure my stitches covered the stitching from assembly. I folded the binding under itself on the wrong side, pinning down and then stitching down with little whip stitches. I did the same for the opening, first back stitching, then felling it down. I did flip the pocket inside to fell down the opening, and it was super easy to sew down. I used the same fabric for my waistband. I first stitched it down to the pocket, again back stitching for security. Then I folded in the edges of the rest of the waistband, and starting from the pocket and working outward, I whip stitched the edges down and together. And with that, my pocket is finished and ready for wear. I love how it turned out, and even though it's ever so slightly smaller than what I was aiming for, it still holds quite a bit of stuff. I also love how flexible it is for wearable options, underneath an apron front skirt using the slits at the side for access, or on the outside of any number of skirts to show off the patchwork. I will definitely be making more of these, both patchwork style and possibly embroidery style down the road. The possibilities are truly endless.